one human species is said to have a skull created by God and a jawbone created by the devil. There is an outdated theory that Homo heidelbergensis was the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, but genetic studies now suggest that this species was too young to be the last common ancestor. Instead, he is now considered a sister lineage, with the oldest specimens being about 600,000 years old. It is also sometimes suggested that this species evolved in Africa before moving to Europe, but there is no evidence for where this species or the last common ancestor lived. Geneticists estimate that we had a common ancestor with the Neanderthal lineage probably more than 500,000 years ago. But who that ancestor was and where that ancestor lived, I think now is, is much less certain than I used to think. I used to think the common ancestor was a species called Homo heidelbergensis, um, and now I'm, I'm not sure about that, and I'm not sure what continent that common ancestor lived on. It may have been in Europe, it may have been in Asia, it, it may have been in Africa. Atapuerca Caves in northern Spain contains 90% of the known fossil record for Homo heidelbergensis. In this video, we will refer to the early humans who lived during Europe's dark prehistory as Atapuerca Man due to disagreements over his exact classification. Previously, scientists referred to Middle Stone Age human fossils that shared traits with both Homo erectus and modern humans as archaic Homo sapiens. You wouldn't want to meet this ancient human in a dark cave. Some specimens stood over six feet tall with thick bones. They were also cannibalistic at times, indicating that they knew how to fight archaic humans. Their brains were smaller than those of Neanderthal or Homo sapiens, which is a tactical disadvantage, but they probably fought with an animalistic ferocity. They had massive bodies as a result of a life spent stabbing horses and cave bears to death and dismantling their bodies. He also built strong trapezius, deltoid and tricep muscles, by dragging 50 pounds of meat 30 miles back to his caves. Atapuerca man had a wider pelvis and a lower centre of gravity, which would be advantageous in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Atapuerca man hunted large animals for food, but the hides could also have been useful, particularly in colder climates. The fossilised bones of these animals reveal that large animals such as rhinos, hippopotamus, bears, horses and deer were targeted. He was able to control fire by building hearths or early fireplaces 790,000 years ago, as evidenced by fire-altered tools and burnt wood. They gathered at these early hearths perhaps to socialise, find comfort and warmth, share food and information, and stay safe from predators. He was also the first hunter of large game animals, remains of wild deer, horses, elephants, hippos and rhinoceros with butchery marks on their bones, have been discovered alongside Atapuerca man fossils. The site in Atapuerca, northern Spain, dating from around 400,000 years ago, contains evidence of what could be human ritual. Scientists discovered the bones of approximately 30 individuals deliberately thrown into a pit. Along with the skeletal remains, scientists discovered a single well-made symmetrical hand axe, demonstrating this species' tool-making abilities. Excavators discovered more than 5,500 human skeletal remains deposited during the Middle Pleistocene period, representing 28 individuals, as well as the hand axe, known as Excalibur. The Atapuerca cave has yielded some of the most remarkable paleontological discoveries in the last decade, including a 350,000-year-old crania and evidence that he was a thinking, imaginative and artistic cannibal. The hand axe has received a surprising amount of attention, and some experts believe that this particular Aculean tool made of red quartzite was used as a ritual offering, most likely for a funeral. The idea reignited debate over evolutionary progress and the stages of human cognitive, intellectual and conceptual development. It appears to be a hand-sized triangular chunk of ochre and purple rock with a slightly scratched surface. The axe is expertly crafted from quartzite, which is abundant in the area, but red quartzite is uncommon. The rock is also too soft to have been used for daily tasks, like breaking bones and cutting wood. These hand axes are typically used to butcher animal carcasses for meat. But the researchers believe the striking red colour is critical to its significance. It's a very unique colour, and they would have had to search for this particular rock. 
this colour held some significance for these people. Nevertheless, paleontologists who discovered this axe head buried in a deep cavern on a Spanish hilltop believe it represents a defining moment in the evolution of the human mind. Indeed, the discovery of what is claimed to be the world's oldest burial artifact sparked a heated scientific debate about when man's mind was ignited by the spark of imagination and creativity. Paleontologists who discovered the axe head among ancient bones in a cave in central Spain said that this pivotal moment in the evolution of man's mind occurred long before our own race, Homo sapiens, reached Europe. The deliberate placement of the axe in a primitive burial chamber was a ritual act and evidence that, in the minds of some very ancient Europeans, death had become something more than a brutish fact of nature. This concept of an afterlife first emerged more than 400,000 years ago on the squat, powerful examples of Atapuerca man, whose remains are being gradually excavated from the so-called pit of bones. The discovery suggests that man's evolution of a mind capable of thinking beyond reality and needs into a world of shared ideas, symbols, fantasy and imagination may have occurred several hundreds of years earlier than previously thought. The greatest debate in human evolution is when men's minds emerged, when the spark was lit. The best proof of that spark would be rock art, the earliest examples of which are only 40,000 years old, evidence of language use, or burial ceremonies. Researchers have gradually come to the conclusion that, as incredible as it may appear, given the age of the site, this was the first instance of symbolic behavior in human history. The group most likely brought their dead into the cavern one by one to be buried together. It had to be a collective effort. Since the Cromerian interglacial 700,000 years ago, Europe has evidence human-built shelters. Nevertheless, the fragmentary nature and rarity of human fossils dating from 900,000 to 600,000 years ago have not resulted in a consensus among researchers on the taxonomic attribution of the fossils. This species lived between 300,000 and 700,000 years ago in southern Europe, and there is evidence that they lived in Poland, Germany and England during warm periods. Evidence also suggests that they hunted cave bears and beavers in Germany 400,000 years ago for their pelts. They used sharpened wooden spears, hardened by fire, and throwing sticks to take down fast prey such as horses and deer. The mauer jaw from Germany is the type specimen for this species, and it was an enormous specimen. Jaw bones and teeth from Algeria on Africa's north coast suggest that this population lived on both sides of the Mediterranean, as well as in southern France, Italy, Greece and Spain, before migrating to northern Europe. This archaic human population also includes the Petralona skull from Greece and Ciprano from Italy. These fossils exhibit characteristics that are intermediate between Homo erectus and either Homo neanderthalensis or Homo sapiens. The fossil evidence for body size is currently limited, but leg bones indicate they were tall, reaching about 180 centimeters in height, around six feet, and having relatively long legs like their earlier ancestor, and the bones, thickness, and bony ridges indicate that these people were well built. The huge lower jaw evolved to accommodate strong chewing muscles. The lower legs were fairly long. Limb proportions like these are an adaptation to tropical conditions, because they provide more skin surface to help cool the body. These limb proportions are similar to those found later in Homo sapiens, but they differ from the short lower legs of Neanderthals. They had a moderate, double-arched brow ridge and a short, sloping forehead above their eyes. The brow ridge was more arched than that of previous species. The sloping forehead resembled that of earlier species rather than the vertical foreheads of modern humans. The brain was large, averaging around 1,250 cubic centimetres in size and accounting for 1.9% of their body weight. The frontal and parietal lobes of the brain were enlarged, which may indicate increased brain complexity. They had a very high encephalization quotient, despite having more primitive brains than modern humans. They possessed a modern human-like hyoid bone, which supports the tongue, and middle ear bones, capable of distinguishing frequencies within the range of normal human speech. Based on dental striations, they appear to have been predominantly right-handed, and handedness is linked to the lateralization of brain function, 
which is typically associated with language processing in modern humans. As a result, it is hypothesized that this population spoke in a simple language. He hunted large animals for food, but the hides could also have been useful, particularly in colder climates. The fossilized bones of these animals reveal that large animals such as rhinos, hippopotamus, bears, horses and deer were targeted. These animals were skillfully hunted and butchered in an orderly manner, indicating that these people worked in cooperative groups. What's more, according to another new study, knife-scarred bones discovered in a prehistoric cave site indicate that cave lions were on the menu for Europe's early humans. The cut marks indicate that the animals were gutted, just like the numerous deer, horses, bison and other common prey animals discovered at the site. The gutted remains also indicate that early humans may have had the first crack at the corpse by killing it themselves. If other animals had killed the lion, the tasty viscera would have vanished by the time the humans arrived. In fact, previous research revealed that Atapurka man, who wielded a wooden spear, was the first known big game hunter. Now new evidence suggests he was a top predator in his day, capable of hunting and even killing the deadly cave lions. Archaeologists found 17 bones of the extinct cave lion Panthera leo fossilis, which was slightly larger than today's African lions. Cut marks on the lion bones allowed the team to reconstruct how they skinned, defleshed, and broke the lion's bones to extract marrow. However, bones alone cannot explain why Atapuerca man interacted with such a dangerous creature. Atapuerca man also butchered a large horse at a 480,000-year-old archaeological site near Boxgrove in the United Kingdom. The site is one of many excavated in quarries near Boxgrove a globally significant site that contains Britain's oldest human remains. Boxgrove I is a tibia discovered at Boxgrove. This shin bone has been gnawed at both ends by an ancient carnivore, but the remaining bone demonstrates that its owner was stronger than modern humans. The large ridges running down the back of the bone are where muscles attach to the bone, indicating that this person had large and powerful leg muscles and stood around six feet tall. During the excavations, archaeologists discovered over 2,000 razor-sharp flint fragments in eight distinct groupings, known as napping scatters. These are the sites where early humans knelt to make their tools, leaving behind a dense concentration of material between their knees. After embarking on an ambitious jigsaw puzzle to piece together the individual flints, it was discovered that in every case they were making large flint knives known as bifaces, which are frequently described as the ideal butcher's tool. This discovery was an extremely rare opportunity to examine a site almost exactly as it had been left behind by an extinct population, after they had gathered to completely process the carcass of a dead horse on the edge of a coastal marsh. Incredibly, researchers have been able to get as close as possible to witnessing the minute-by-minute -minute movement and behaviours of a single seemingly tight-knit group of early humans. A community of people, young and old, working together in a cooperative and highly social manner. Early on, researchers determined that at least eight humans were making tools at the site, and they suspected that a small hunting party was responsible for the butchering. Nevertheless, investigators were surprised to find evidence of other activities and movement throughout the site, raising the possibility of a much larger group being present. The detailed examination of the horse bones reveals that the animal was not only stripped of meat, but each bone was broken down with stone hammers so that the marrow and liquid grease could be extracted. The horse appears to have been completely processed, with the fat, marrow, internal organs, and even partially digested stomach contents serving as a nutritious meal for the early human group of thirty or forty people planned for the site. But the horse provided more than just food, and a thorough examination of the bones revealed that several bones had been used as tools known as retouchers. These are among the earliest non-stone tools discovered in the archaeological record of human evolution. They would have been necessary for producing the finely crafted flint knives found throughout the Boxgrove landscape. The discovery suggests that these early human cultures understood the properties of various organic materials and how tools could be made to improve the production of other tools.
along with the meticulous butchery of the horse and the complex social interaction implied by the stone refitting patterns, it provides additional evidence that the early human population at Boxgrove was cognitively, socially and culturally sophisticated, according to the report. Cooperative activity among a larger number of people indicates that these temporary sites could have been highly social spaces for interaction, learning, and the sharing of tools and ideas. The horse butchery site exemplifies this behavior more vividly than any other archaeological site discovered to date. Between 600,000 and 200,000 years ago, the climate of Europe went through a series of warm and cool phases, subjecting these people to generally colder climates. A severe cold, dry period began around 300,000 years ago. And despite the possibility of movement between Europe and Northern Asia, populations were separated from one another and regional differences began to emerge. According to one theory, this population evolved into subspecies of Homo sapiens, Denisovans and Neanderthals. However, they could also be a fourth sister species to these three groups rather than a direct ancestor, according to new genetic estimates of divergence times. In one scenario, they evolved from a branch of Homo erectus, closely related to Peking man, and spread west during a warm interglacial to repopulate Europe following a particularly devastating cold spell around 800,000 years ago. Some European fossils exhibit characteristics that suggest they were intermediate between Homo erectus and Neanderthals. Their classification is thus still debatable. Is Atapuerca man simply an early Homo neanderthalensis, the ancestor of all humans today, or a dead offshoot? And with that, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, please subscribe and leave a comment and watch our other videos. We appreciate your support.